Next, we have Terry Schultz with uh, the Nature Conservancy. Thank you, Terry. All right, thank you. Um, and thank you, Brandon, for setting up some of this uh, uh, discussion. So my co-author, uh, Jeff Herrick, uh, is uh, one who's the brain trust behind Land PKS. So if you have specific questions about that, I'm gonna have to defer you to him, but I'm gonna talk about and this is more of a potential way that landowners can be monitoring their system and lead into big data, um, as Brandon was mentioning. So how can we use a phone app, uh, land potential knowledge system, land PKS, to do adaptive management? So this is a free uh, phone app that anybody can download. Uh, it's a system that allows you to store and then access your data. And it's a system that will allow us to share that data, information and knowledge in uh, a big data system, which is available on the web. There are four input modules, uh, land info, land management, soil health, and land cover. And I'm gonna talk about especially some of the newer modules for those that might not be familiar with it. So for 2019, now we have um, a great way to identify the soil that you have at your site and ecological site information. There's a brand new soil health module and um, there's also a privacy option and that was really important for many users in the United States. So you have mapped soils that NRCS and other databases show around the world um, and that information that you collect um, locally can, can verify what your soil is. That leads you to ecological site information and that you can have available to you on your phone. Uh, the benefits of identifying that soil, it really lets you access that relevant NRCS information, a landowner to do that in the field or a land manager, um, and it helps you then set realistic management targets if you know what the potential is of your land based on what your soil is at the location. It also will provide you with uh, climate information uh, based on, again, that GPS location. Soil health is new for um, uh, 2019, and so you can enter information about erosion, compaction, um, aggregate stability, the smell of the soil, and biological activities. Also, if you've done some soil tests, it allows you to store that data um, on your, uh, within the app. The land info, uh, which people may be more familiar with since that's been around for a while, allows you to talk about land use, what kind of animals are grazing the land, the slope, soil texture, with even some cool little videos on how to texture your soil. Uh, this is really rapid um, data collection and is compatible with AIM methodology. So it's line point intercept uh, using a ruler. Uh, it is, however, at the functional group level, and which is what most landowners and land managers really need rather than at the species level. There are many benefits to collecting that data, comparing it to other um, accessible data, allows you, to, if you're a permittee, to communicate with the BLM, speak their language, and compare it to other AIM collected data. Uh, also allows you to then put your data in context with uh, regional data. So for 2020, uh, this is what I'm gonna spend more time on, talking about um, a habitat output module that's in development. Also some um, additional places where you can record if you've collected information on biomass and utilization. So this, uh, we received a NRCS uh, Conservation Innovation Grant, and here are the partners that are participating in this project. We have a great group of collaborators and it's been a wonderful project to be a part of. All right. So uh, we have the new modules that will be, or new information output module for wildlife habitat. Um, we're gonna be doing 20 workshops in five states and we're going to be, uh, we have a graduate student that's gonna be doing some survey work that will then um, talk about in, uh, enhancing the, the app. Essentially, if you're in a location, we have species information in the app, 20 species to start and more over time. Um, you will get information about the species that you're within the range for. 
This is just a screenshot of what the app will look like. You'll have some information um, on what the ideal habitat is for that species. And then if you've collected data um, in the wildlife uh, or in the rest of the app, um, it'll show you what your data is compared to what the ideal data is for this species. We also have some uh, photos just to give you a snapshot of what does the habitat look like. Um, and so you might be in short grass prairie or mid grass prairie or um, arid grasslands and just to have a sense of what that looks like. We also will have fact sheets that will provide information um, written for ranchers to understand what the habitat needs are for those selected species that you are within the range for. And that will provide more information on what activities you might do to enhance habitat and what activities to avoid in that area. We also will be doing workshops, um, and these will be on adaptive management uh, with aspects such as how to set appropriate goals and monitoring using the app. We also will include drought planning within that workshop. And our goal is to reach 200 producers, 300 producers and um, agency staff. And we have not set all those workshops up. We're starting them in the fall, and we'll have two years where we'll be out there doing workshops across the western U.S. And so if people are interested in helping host a workshop, we would welcome that. And if you would like more information, you can go to the LAN um, potential website to learn more about the app. Thank you. Questions? Thanks, Terry. Um, is there a particular scale of land management unit that you guys think is most appropriate for this kind of information gathering? Great question. So um, the data is taken at a point location and lined intercepts, so it's taken at a small scale, but there is discussion with some others to um, provide some information within the app on how you should set out monitoring transects within an area, and that's coming I don't know when, but we've been in discussions to try and say, you know, how to set up a representative sample, how many uh, should you set out within a, but you know, all that is context specific. So we're trying to figure out how we can provide that information, maybe on the website, maybe in the app in the future to help you think about that. Question up here. Oh, there. Sorry, Go ahead. you over here. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just curious, you know, the one of the things about Lime PKS that's really nice is a digital data collection platform. And just curious if it has been or is planned on uh, being included in development actual species level information platform for those who may have that interest. So the wildlife habitat um, uh, information is providing you with information by species. So there'll be plant species. Plant species. The, I, yeah, you know, I'm saying wildlife. I, I mean that more generally. We do have some, have some plant species that will be in there, some uh, rare and potentially threatened species. So um, prairie fringed orchid, for instance, will be in this first round of the app. And um, so we're, we're going to try for all taxa to see what we can see how that works for the first round. And it, it, it's set up so you could put in there for different species as well in the future. So right now, a couple of rare species, plant species, but hopefully um, if anybody is interested in doing this, we're setting up templates so that if others have additional species they'd like to add into the app, that would be potentially available to do in future rounds. So happy to talk to you more about that. Okay, <laughs> quick question. Um, sure. Very cool. Is it all quantitative data that you're collecting, or is there any possibility of collecting qualitative data? I just think it would be really neat to get a rancher's interpretation, not just of uh, the data, but what they think about the data. So from the survey work that will be done to improve the app, I'm, there will definitely be some qualitative questions asked of them about how they're using it and what their interpretation is. Um, but the, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to add anything qualitative into the app in this round. There may be some other things in the future, and Jeff is always open to who has new ideas and different things to add in, and, but we also don't want to recreate the wheel. So if somebody else has additional app, an app already that's collecting that data, we don't want to create a duplicative thing, but we also are trying to make sure that the app can speak to other platforms. So, um, but if there's something that's missing, I think we're all, the team is always open to listen to that and to see how we might be able to do that in the future if it's warranted. Thank you. 